Let's take a look at Math, Grade 4, Module 6, Lesson 3, Decimal Fractions. Topic A, Exploration of Tenths. Alright, so we're going to use our place value disks to show 21 units of one-tenth. So this disk right here is going to be representing one-tenth, and it says so on it, 0 decimal 1. I want to show 21 units of this. So here's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now one of the things we want to do whenever we're dealing with disks or we're drawing dots in math, we want to attend to precision. We want to make sure that we keep things neat and lined up. So I'm going to like line them up. In this case, I'm going to do them in, in like rows of five. So I have five in this row, and then I'm going to have another five. That will give me ten. And then I have another five. That makes fifteen. And another five makes twenty. And then I need one more. So now I have twenty-one units of one-tenth. Is there any way I could use fewer disks to show this same amount? I can take this group of ten and I can trade these in for another disks. Because if I put ten one-tenth parts together, I can make one whole. So instead of having ten tenths, I can show that with one disk that represents one whole. And since I have twenty, I can do the same thing with this group. This group of ten one tenth pieces, I can group together and I can represent with one disk that's valued at one whole. So what disks do I have now? I have a one whole a one whole and a one tenth. I have two ones and one tenth. So in decimal form, you could say I have two and one tenth. Two decimal one. Now how many more tenths would I need to make another whole? I would need nine more tenths. I would need this one tenth plus nine more tenths to make another whole. How do I write nine tenths as a decimal? Zero decimal nine. Okay, so let's take a look at this disk. What is the value of this disk? Well, it says on there ten. That means I have ten of these that make up one of these. But what if I had more of these disks? Let's say I had four of them. I can think about these four tens as being four times one ten. Four times I have one ten disk. I can think about that as being four times ten four tens. Now, what if I were to, let's put in two of these. So what am I representing here? Well, in this case, I'm representing that I have two times one. So over here, I have four times ten. And here, I have 2 times 1. Well, I can see that I can put these together. I can multiply my 4 times 10, and I can multiply my 2 times 1, and then I can add those together. Now, let's say I add one of these. Well, this is representing that I have 1 tenth. 
So let's say I add six of these. What would this show with multiplication? Well, right now it's showing that I have one-tenth, right? One-tenth, six times. So it would be six times one-tenth. So here I have four times ten, that's forty. And here I have two times one, that's two. And over here I have six times one-tenth, which would be six-tenths. So let's look at those things added together. I would have 40 plus 2 plus 6 tenths. Let's think about this with, if we write the whole thing in expanded form. We have 4 times 10 plus 2 times 1 plus 6 times 1 tenth, which would equal 40, 2, and six tenths. Let's write it in expanded form as a decimal. It's just instead of here having six times one tenth as a fraction, you would have six times zero decimal one. So when we write it in expanded form, the decimal portion would look like this. Six times zero decimal one. And when we multiply four times ten, we get forty. When we multiply two times one, we get two. When we multiply six times one tenth, we get six tenths. When we add those pieces together, forty plus two plus six tenths is forty two and six tenths. Now one of the activities you're going to do is you're going to have to use a number line and you're going to have to find where a decimal number would be on the number line, write it in decimal form, um, show it as a mixed number in fraction form, do an expanded form, and tell how many more are needed to get to the next one. So let's do a couple of these. We're going to begin by doing four and one tenth. So here I have a number line. And I'm going to put like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 on there. And I'm going to figure out where 4 and 1 tenth would be. Well, I know 4 is here, so 1 tenth is going to be 1 space past the 4. Here's 4 and 1 tenth. So if I were doing 4 and 1 tenth as my A on this page, then I would label this number line with a 4 on one side and a 5 on the other because 4 decimal 1 would be between the 4 and the 5 on the number line. If this were 24 and 1 tenth, then it would be between 24 and 25. So here's where 4 and 1 tenth goes. It wants me to write it in decimal form, which is what this is wants me to write it as a mixed number. So as a mixed number, I would say that I have four holes and one more part, one-tenth more. So I would write four and one-tenth. Now when I'm doing it in expanded form, I would think about each place value. So I have something in the ones place. So that's going to be four times one. And I have one in the tenths place. So that's going to be one times one tenth. So my expanded form would probably look like this. Now I could have written this in decimal or in fraction. I'm going to show you both for this first one. So four times one plus one times one tenth would be equal to four and one tenth. I could have also written it as a decimal. Four times one plus one times one tenth is equal to four decimal one, four point one. And then how much more would I need to get to the next one? Well, I can look on my number line and I can see that it would take me nine tenths to get to the next one. So I could write my answer to this in fraction or in decimal form. 
so it would be like that. Nine-tenths more to get to the next hole, or nine-tenths written as a decimal. So let's try another one. This time we're going to do 32 and 5 tenths. Now when I look at my number line up here, I don't see a 32. But I can think about this 0 being 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, and 35. And I can think about between which two numbers 32 and 5 tenths would fall. It would be between 32 and 33. So I can label it that way. And then think about where I would draw my dot. It would be 5 tenths, so that's going to be right in the middle. So it would be 1 tenth, 2 tenths, 3 tenths, 4 tenths, 5 tenths. So it would be there on the number line. Written as a decimal, it would be 32 and 5 tenths. Written as a mixed number, it would be 32 and 5 tenths. In expanded form, well, this time I have a tens place, a ones place, and a tenths place. So I have 3 times 10, 2 times 1, 5 times 1 tenth. So I might have to do it on two separate lines, but I have 3 times 10 plus 2 times 1. Now my decimal 5 part, I can do it as a decimal or a fraction. I'm going to do this one as a fraction. 5 times 1 tenth. And when those things are multiplied and then added together, I get 32 and 5 tenths. So how many more do I need to get to the next hole? I can look at my number line and see that I need 5 more tenths. And I can write that as a fraction or a decimal. And that will take care of things for Lesson 3, where we've been working to represent mixed numbers with units of tens, ones, and tenths, with number disks on the number line and in expanded form.